it's the the oath of course is obnoxious to that's my kids. that is my sole objection that is, well, that, it uh, is that oath, to me it is a oath. satanic anti-catholic anti-christian uh inversion of the entire ceremony charles you and i both know that that ceremony did not make charles the king the death of his mother made him the king, correct? Yeah, the death of his yes. mother made him so, the king. So the, the ceremony but. is in place in the church, in Christianity, in order to provide an external sign and a signature and to give him the graces to rule as a Christian king. That's what the yep. coronation is about. Just like a pope yes, becomes sir. a pope when he accepts the election of him as pope, not when he was coronated as pope. So yeah. the fact that at the at, in the middle of this beautiful, as you said, a desiccated medieval ceremony, is still the defense of the Protestant religion, it's a mockery. It's it's pretty obnoxious. But having said Very. that, having said that, I can only refer to my own oath to defend the Constitution. And remember, when I did that, abortion was part of the Constitution. And you can say, well, that came later. No, no, no. The Constitution is the Constitution as it is. No, but it would be different. Document. It would be different. I could I could swear allegiance to the, if I were an Englishman, to the King of England and, and, and be <laughs> scots free. I mean, I could be, I would be clean. But if I said, I also affirm abortion, then I'm not. Well, then you're not. But the thing is, the Supremes, who, as we know, are the divinely ordained interpreters of the Constitution, the Supreme Court, the oracles at Delphi, <laughs> they maintained that in fact, well, they did maintain, now they've changed their mind, but they did maintain that abortion was part of it. And they do maintain that gay marriage is part of it. And judging by the uh, foreign policy of my country, sitting here in Austria, watching the rainbow flag over my uh, embassy, I can't tell you how proud that makes me. Right. I really can't tell you how proud that makes me. I really can't tell you how proud that makes me. <laughs> I really can, but just not able to. Yeah. Every time I pass that thing, I'm just so proud right. in some way or other. But uh, nevertheless, the great constitutional authorities would tell us that this is all part of it. And they would tell me that that's what I was swearing allegiance to. I would say they're wrong, which is why I took the oath, obviously. Right. If I thought that's what I was swearing an oath to defend. Now, with this. But I mean, our case is more taken, slippery. This, we have a televised moment of a man disavowing no. Catholicism. No, it is, but it is again, much more explicit. Again, we have to grant it. It is very, I will grant it. But, and here's the big but, as always, there's a big but. If the president of France, who is a canon of St. John Lateran, by virtue of his office, still has also taken an, oh, yes. Yeah. Nicolas Sarkozy was the very first divorced canon of St. John Lateran. I saw his enthronement on French TV. It was beautiful. <laughs> what? It was great. The president of the Republic, one and indivisible, the current carrier of French revolutionary ideals. And he's a canon of St. John Lateran. What's not to like, right? Yeah. So I say this because in the world of oaths and so forth, you have a lot of strange and slippery things.